mission list Locked. updated. Are you okay? So the vocal cord parasites that have infected Mother Base. They're ethnic cleansers designed to silence those who don't fit into Skullface's worldview. We can't allow him to have such power. Go over the mission details and get going ASAP. This is so weird that I'm back on the ship now. If I launch the next mission, do I just show up exactly where we left off? Test your skills with a range of tasks. Achieving tasks set free in the challenge task list will reward you with GMP resources and volunteers. Uh, right, you're gonna do this right now? You find some you can complete straight away, while others will take more time. Pick and choose the best tasks to try based on your in-game progress. Be aware that the list can be displayed while playing in oh, it can only be displayed in online mode. They keep adding more things that you can only do in, dis in online mode, huh? Let's see. Are you a, is that one a joke? Performed 50 total markings? That's easy. Achieve tasks and receive your rewards. Start by checking which tasks are available on the list and choose some to achieve. Once achieved, tasks will be marked with a different icon. Align the cursor with the completed task to accept your reward. Also, switching between tabs allows you to filter the list to display unachieved tasks or achieved tasks with the rewards you have yet unaccepted. Alright. Wow. I can get a lot of, like, high-ranking personnel by achieving these, these tasks, which mostly are about markings, which is really easy. Takedowns. Oh, 100 tactical takedowns gives you an S soldier. Haven't gotten that one yet. 70, though. Oh, yeah, I already maxed out the headshot one. Interrogation. 50 interrogations. I've done that already, huh? Fultoning people. Need to do 500 Fultons to get the last one. Alright, I've done a lot of these, but seeing as a lot, a lot of them give me, uh... I'll buy the... I'll, I'll buy the... I'll grab the currency-based ones. And these vehicle-based ones. I'm gonna not accept any of these people just in, until this plague is over, just to make sure that my free rewards don't get fucking executed by a plague. Oh wow, there's a lot of them, too. Document collection rate of 30 I have a 30% document collection rate? That seems high. Played 30% of intel tapes. 50% of music tapes. An annual conservation list completion is 30%. Have I even been grabbing? I don't even remember getting animals to conserve. I extracted a wild Grant's zebra, a wild boar goat. I guess it's not that I've extracted that many, but just I happen to get, whenever I do it must be specifically different types. 100% bond with a uh, D-Dog, 25 with Quiet. Which apparently gives you a Walker expansion, which is a weird thing to get from a... Uh, quiet. Uh, mission task completion rate of 20%. <laughs> way, way to rub in how little progress I've made in this game overall, huh? Uh, a lot of guns here. Wait, these are all... Oh, these are all for achieving specific side... Which, uh, side tasks and various missions. Might as well grab what I can. Let's see. Yeah, task tasks with unachieved result. Uh, oh, requirements. No. Yeah, rewards not accepted. We'll filter it down to just that to make it this easier. And look for things that aren't people. Four prisoners in the village in chapter 26. That was only a couple chapters ago, I think. Get some rock. Side op completion of 10%. <laughs> Only 10%! There's a lot of side ops in this game, damn. Uh, S rank of 10%. That's a little more impressive. So many soldiers are gonna be joining my crew as, as soon as I... I'm okay with that. Key dispatch mission completion rate of 50%. So I'm- I think that means I'm more than 50% of the way through the main... ...story? Dispatch mission re re recapture Colton Mine, presidential escort. Just getting a whole bunch of stuff here. Ooh. Ooh, this is great. Gather a stock of 10 of these different items. That's awesome. That's a lot of fuel resources, for example. Which is a big deal for base development. Alright, well this certainly happened. That was, and I still have 58 to claim that are all soldiers, I believe. So that'll definitely help my base out, too. Alright. Straight up progress happened here. Oh, four died from the epidemic. 
And five new people were transferred to quarantine. I gotta keep going. Unfort Alright, so, just to get an idea. Wow, yeah. We're up to 26,000 fuel resources, which is certainly not bad. I think I spent a lot- I think I spent most of it at the beginning of this episode working on command platform to get more soldiers in my base, so... That is... That's an expansion. Episode 29, Metallic Archaea. Fight off the Skull's assault and return to base with Code Talker. An unusual mist has blanketed the area. The Skulls must be eliminated before it will clear. Boss, you okay? There's an unusual mist in front of your chopper. It could be the same one as before. Cypher is trying to eliminate Code Talker, but we can't save the infected without him. Boss, whatever you do, bring Code Talker back alive. Ah, uh, Pequod's dead. He was one of my only friends. Coming.
Uh. Oh. All right, that went poorly. Um, Jesus Christ. Getting around. Snake. Snake. That went poorly. I'm trying. Ah, oh, now I'm dead already. Jesus Christ. Hey, quit kidding around. It's a little rough to just get thrown into a room full of bad guys. Jesus Christ. Ah. Get fucked. Ah. Get fucked. Where are you? Where are you? What? 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 No! No! What? 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 They, that's a thing I have to worry about happening. What? Hey, what? Snake. Snake. Jesus Christ! This goes wrong bad. And I had to rewatch the entire damn cutscene again because it's unskippable apparently. Just to swap out that one piece of equipment. Damn. Just need to try to stay away from the cloud of orange, I guess. Come on, go down. Yeah, I know. I noticed. That guy's down. Where's the other one? He's throwing a whole rock this way. There's one. Where are you at? Oh, I'm focusing on the big ones, obviously. Where'd he go? Oh! Go down. Jesus Christ, man. Chill out. No, we gotta move. Is he not taking damage now? What's going on? Oh, shit. No, don't do this to me right now. Is it- is it done? Where are they? Okay. Um... Get fucked! There we go. Sometimes it shows a health bar. Oh shit! No, no, no. Damn, I was trying to call in a supply drop. Get fucked. Don't care about the randoms very much. Oh, is he healing? No. That's like the exact thing I don't want you to do. Um. If I can just take cover for a moment. Supply drop. Ammo. Right over there. Get out of here. Get out of the menu. <laughs> I'm just trying to get more Gatling ammo if I can. There we go. Because I probably need it. No! Shame on you! Is that all the big ones? Is that all the big ones? I don't see any more. Oh, there's one. There's one. Ha. Huh. Can't extract that one. I can extract these guys though. Oh, they're they're running away now. Okay, that certainly happened. Ah, uh, it goes so much smoother when you just get a good attempt in. Once I realized that, once I realized what the smoke was gonna do to me, it was actually not too bad. Oh, of course I would I would have trouble here. We're in we're back in that dreaded airport again. <laughs> Well, I'm definitely gonna extract people because we've been infected. Although, although I'm sure people who have literally been infected lately are probably not the best targets, are they? For uh, people to pull back in. I can't help it. There's just so many knocked out targets right here. I must have shot that guy to death, or he must have died otherwise. Interestingly, the guy in the cutscene that get that we see getting infected in the beginning. Apparently he's randomly generated because this time around is when I came back in with a D walker It was actually a white guy this time That was a bit of a surprise. Hello 
Yeah, if they're gonna auto knock out so many guys, I'm totally gonna try to extract them. Let's get out of here, get out of, let's get out of here, buddy. Huh. That was a bit of an ordeal. Got him though. Go go D Walker. Guys? Wasn't sure if he was gonna come down at first. Oh, weird. Transition out. Immortal achievement unlocked. Probably just for doing that mission. Two more dead two more are dead from the plague now. Whoa, a lot of people got a they got service cross. Did they die? Or those new people? <laughs> huh. Yes. Mission complete. Boss, that was exceptional. A. Probably because of the not a, no ability doing re, no retries. How do you do? Is perfect stealth even possible in that mission? Because they they you start the mission with them staring at you. Huh. Who knows? I'm happy to have completed that one though. That one had this mission has Huey in it. Maybe in the post cutscene. Or then maybe that maybe that maybe Huey's always in those credits. I haven't looked at them for a while. Skullface is no longer in Africa. The nuclear test was a success. Now they turned the knives on me. Satellites didn't read any test. Neither did seismometers. The detonation test took place five years ago in the southern Indian Ocean. The final test was the opposite, to prevent detonation. You mean? Skullface plans to sell nuclear weapons that he retains control of. It's not like hawking small arms to militias. Indeed. He plans to avoid detection. We're exporting minerals containing tiny amounts of uranium in the form of metallic archaea. Once on site, the metallic archaea enrich the uranium and weaponize it. Loaded onto all-terrain bipedal machines, they ensure any country, armed group, even the smallest terrorist cell, can become a nuclear power. Bipedal. So that's why they needed Huey. A new business to replace the arms business. And Skullface owns the market. The very atmosphere of nukes, anywhere and everywhere, Deterrence on all sides. So that's why he ran a non-detonation test. Yes. Another metallic archaea instantly overrides the criticality generator. It fails safe only he controls. Any such weapon can be deactivated whenever he chooses, regardless of who owns it or their intent to use it. Nukes. Controlled by a man, not a country. If they proliferate, conventional nukes lose all value. Political, military, and economic. The two superpowers become powerless. teams have come up with a proposal for a new suit that applies Code Talker's research, the Parasite Suit. Apparently, it can recreate some of the Skull's unusual abilities. But in order to use those abilities, it needs Parasites. If you want to wear this suit, you're going to need to get a hold of Parasites by extracting Skulls. This got a new salt. Ooh, hello. All right, not not amazing, but definitely got some A pluses from that batch. Pretty high amount of extracts for such a short mission, for sure. We need to stop the epidemic at Mother Base. The 
Without the pathogen spreading through Mother Base, what's your opinion? Textbook symptoms of vocal cord parasite infestation. And judging from this casualty list, it is the Kikango strain. Meaning, a breed of parasite that triggers symptoms upon detecting pronunciation specific to Kikango. So how do we keep them from becoming symptomatic? Use this. A type of Wolbachia. Introduced to a sample of the parasite. The parasitic bacteria that colonizes the parasites. Turning male to female. And preventing copulation. We must cultivate more. to put a stop to any new vocal cord parasite infections. We couldn't save those already symptomatic, but everyone who survived has been released from the quarantine platform. Skullface will pay for this. Again, with a truth serum? What are those legs made of? Titanium? All the way to the femur. <laughs> Metallic Archaea. Sohilanthropus. Where is it? What? We have to know before his plan is complete. Sir Helanthropus is the final piece. W w what are you talking about? If the Soviets break out a mobile, controllable nuclear weapon... <laughs> East-West relations will be right back at the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Cold War returns to life as countries without nuclear arsenals line up for what Skullface is selling. Nuclear weapons proliferate overnight, and on the brink of annihilation, the world maintains its balance. But we know this is all just a shield, a ruse. The cleansing parasites are what matter most. A WMD to eclipse even nukes, and the only one that can still be you. Skullface is the world's greatest threat. And zeroes. The pieces are in place. All that remains is to unveil Sahelanthropus in Afghanistan. They can't activate it without me. Zero. 
This Helanthropus is beyond the Soviet base camp, in a lab built by the Soviet philosophers. That's what you're looking for. But I have no idea how he's controlling it. It wasn't designed to accommodate a human pilot. Word from Afghanistan. Everyone at the Soviet base camp's dead. No sign of fighting. Parasites. Skullface's men then headed north. The target is OKB-0. That's where he'll activate Sahalanthropus. Unless we stop him, he'll go down in history a conquering victor. We can't let that happen. Wipe him out. Don't leave any trace of his existence. I'm gonna need backup on this one. Your rendezvous on site. This is just a thing that happens now all the time. We just go back to the to be continued screen on a regular basis. Has that ever happened before? Until like last mission? Weird. It's just regular now. I feel so bad for Huey in these scenes. They're so maniacal and like just seemingly just evil in the way that they interrogate him. <laughs> like, like we we asked half of a question. We we mostly just kind of inferred what our question is and barely even asked the question at all. Here's a horrible death threat where you're gonna die in a horrible violent ways as we snap your leg and inject you with corrosive stuff. It's like no, but no big deal. It's like what Jesus guys, there's I guess we're not we're not necessarily good the good guys, but damn we're supposed to be the protagonists of the game. <laughs> it's a little hard to accept those scenes. <laughs> Whoa, 212 staff recovered. Look at everything leveling up like crazy. Yay, everyone's back. And we have higher level characters to deal with too, so it's... Jesus Christ, everything's just popping up. I don't even know what half the stuff means. I don't even know what a lot of that stuff means. There's just, oh my God, this stuff just keeps popping up. All right. Well, might as well assign accordingly. Now that we have a lot of brand new people. There we go. Alright, so we have 28 combat, 27 security, 31 R&D, 28 base development, 28 support, 30 intel, 29 medical with Code Talker leading that group now. I was a little surprised to see that uh, we were dealing with uh, Huey the way we do just because he has been... I've been seeing him in the R&D team all the time, although maybe he doesn't count yet. Maybe he's been in, pri maybe he's been, been in prison this entire time and hasn't counted towards that total in earnest yet. Definitely need to kidnap some more people, because we are not at maximum with all the people we lost. But that's where doing another one of those missions would come in handy. Combat deployment. If it loads, there we go. These online missions seem really handy, the ones that give me a bunch of high-ranking soldiers Specifically, I saw that the uh, we were really low on combat people, so we need to get a whole bunch of those. So, the one that gets me a whole bunch of high-ranking 
Is it this one? Oh yeah. 30 A-plus volunteers. Predicted loss is 40% of a 20-person crew. Which is not too bad. Oh yeah, especially since I can, just like last time, I can rank it down to B, just to a B rank, and it still has a super high chance of success, which is weird. It's a little weird. It, it, not only is it B people, but it's only eight B people, and it'll be like, yeah, we'll give you 30 A pluses, no big deal. All right, I'll sacrifice some weak B lit rank characters. I believe I can do this one too, right? I have C-rank people I can send on this one. And sending C-rank people will still only have a 40% loss rate, but give me... Uh... 30 A-rank volunteers. That's obviously an improvement. Alright. And I can have a pick of a different other- a bunch of other different crews, too. If I have enough crew, I can send them on it, so... Undermanned crew... at the moment is security. Let's see if I can find a security one. We'll see what the chance of success is. We can, we can potentially just sit here and just fill in these slots that are left open by the, uh, what happened. Let's see, security is this... Crap, I have to remind myself. Did I lose? One, one person died for, oh, from injuries. Oh, Just to remind myself, security is the shield. I was looking at the support thing for a second there. Was that even one of the options? It might not have been. Please select a mission. Looking for a shield. There's no shield. Okay. Nope. Can go for base development, for example, though. That wouldn't hurt, because base development helps your stats and stuff like that. For, uh, making money. And I totally- oh, I don't have a, I don't have C rank people to send in. A to C, though, would help- let's see. Yeah, risk some A people for a whole lot more A people. Still seems worthwhile. Mainly because it says 100% success rate. Alright, get busy out there. Next time I play- Next time I load this game up, I'm probably gonna have a whole bunch of, uh... New soldiers to look at. Code Dogger. What are the metallic archaea? Volcanic craters. Spewing sulfur. Water. Hot enough to boil your skin off. Ocean depths of 800 plus atmospheres. Wastelands radioactive enough to kill you where you stand. <laughs> there are groups of organisms that survive despite. No, because of living in such environments. I've heard about them. Extremo something. Extremo files. By selecting certain species, then subculturing and repeatedly modifying them, I created a metallic offspring of pure archaea. They subsist on metals rather than organic matter. And some of them even consume uranium? Yes. Uranium enrichment archaea metabolize only uranium-235. As a result, they produce weapons grade enriched uranium. How is that possible? Consider how plants fractionate carbon isotopes when they conduct photosynthesis. Nature possesses abilities beyond our imagination. So it was Archaea that brought down your chopper? Corrosive Archaea, yes. They oxidize metals feeding off the energy in the electrons they receive. What became of the wreckage? We had the R&D team retrieve samples for study in uh, airtight plastic containers, of course. Prudent. We shall extract our chaos from it in good time. They should help you fight back against Black Anna. Any chance we could start now? It doesn't have to be a lot. I might just have another use for them. If it's only a small amount you need. That's fine. I'll get the R&D team to assist. Let's go. South Africa was previously suspected of developing nuclear weapons. It already had a conspicuous presence at the UN because of apartheid and its armed expansionism. 
But when neighboring Angola and Mozambique became socialist countries in 74, South Africa felt hounded into a corner. So it accelerated its nuclear program to protect itself. Three years later, the Soviets discovered a test facility. And two years after that, an American satellite observed a flash in the southern Indian Ocean. It said this was South Africa conducting a nuclear test with the help of a certain ally. Skullface used the situation in South Africa to get this ally to lend a hand. They both wanted nukes, so it was a mutually beneficial relationship. On the surface, anyway. I figure South Africa started getting serious about nuclear weapons production in 75. In 74, the government was still able to get by with bluffing that it had a nuclear arsenal. But the year after, word spread that an independent armed group in the Caribbean was crushed by Cypher for possessing a WMD. That's right, boss. What happened to you and your men was the reason South Africa decided to push ahead with nuclear development. A force independent of any country getting its hands on a nuke. That was a threat to the existence of countries everywhere. It wasn't just South Africa. Your presence pushed a lot of countries to get nukes. The world was scared of you. You were a threat to more than just the Cold War. If nations are gears in a machine, you had the power to smash them loose and watch the whole world grind to a halt. Emmerich uses externally powered legs of his own design. It's bionics technology, a product of the U.S. military's failed attempt to develop a powered exoskeleton. All the wearer has to do is apply a little force, and the actuators continue the movement in that direction. But his legs are unique. Instead of using a hydraulic mechanism, the actuators run off metallic archaea. That increases the actuator's reaction speed and also enables him to lock and release the joints at will. The legs are a nifty little gadget, but they have two clear weaknesses. First, they're dependent on external power, maybe because he built them knowing he couldn't leave his lab. There's no internal battery. That's why they won't work if they aren't plugged in. Second, and this is more than just a weakness, the legs are directly connected to his bones. Could be to minimize signal loss and the order's output to the legs and the drive response from them, Either way, Emmerich has used bolts to attach load-bearing parts directly to his femurs, probably by mimicking surgical treatment for compound fractures and the like. But the end result is those legs and his body are fused together, and that appears to be how he's able to move them so precisely. But that also means that any shock to the legs would be delivered right to his bones by way of those bolts. The same is true if he encounters the corrosive metallic archaea. If the corrosive archaea ate into the exposed bolts, they'd reach the endoskeleton parts and eat through them too in the blink of an eye. The doctor's bones are full of holes to accommodate all the bolts. They're like sponges. If he were to lose the reinforcing parts, even the tiniest bit of force or weight would snap his bones. So when I dangled those corrosive metallic archaea in front of him, he realized straight away what would happen. Life wouldn't be worth living if he lost those legs of his. I'd bet that is what the doctor fears the most. I just helped him imagine what it would be like. Thanks to that, I got the information we needed without either of us getting hurt. You know how he is. He's probably already over the shock. The better you know your adversary, the easier it is for you to get information from them. And vice versa.